I, uh, I jumped off the top rope and landed funny. I broke my ankle in six places and I tore three ligaments. So uh, that was two days after I got a cast off my arm, which it was broken. I was able to wrestle with that, but I couldn't wrestle with the broken ankle. And then a, a few days after I broke my ankle, I went ahead and got a shoulder surgery that I needed for uh, quite some time. So I've, I've been out for the past six months uh, just recovering and uh, it was actually a blessing. I was fortunate to uh, be home when my uh, baby boy was born. So we may have a fourth generation wrestler coming up now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was excited, you know, I, was, I, I couldn't be happier to ever break my ankle. <laughs> uh, so I was home to see that, but now I'm, I'm back and uh, I'm ready to get my career back on track. So excited for the future. Okay, we're gone. Thank you. Did you play yourself How did you in the game? What do you think about yourself in the game? Are you, uh, did it, does it uh, fit you? Well, uh, me personally, I, I, I love it because I look even more jacked, as I was saying earlier. My muscles are much bigger in the game. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I, I show pictures of the game to my friends. I'm like, this is what I really look like. You know? uh, but no, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, me personally, I, they have it where I, I can play my father. I've been able to play myself against my father. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of neat for me to beat up my dad, so to speak. Because we've never had that opportunity for real inside the ring. So uh, it's an amazing game. and uh, it, it's. It's easy to play, it's easy to pick up, which is good for me because I'm not a, a, a huge gamer, but uh, I've, I've picked it up really quickly and we always have a tournament at WrestleMania and you know, that's fun to participate in and so all of us guys, you know, we're always practicing so we can, we hate losing to each other, obviously. <laughs> I just like it because it makes me look young again. <laughs> it takes like 15 years off and so that, that's always good. I, I don't really play uh, the games. It's nice to watch my children play them. Um, it's incredible when I think back to the first games that I was on, which was the WCW games in the mid 90s, and you know they were sort of very clunky looking, and now you look at the graphics and they're, they're incredible. So it, it's the same with the action figures. Everything's sort of progressing constantly, and I. I well they look and it's, um, it's a, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in 10 years what, what they're going to look like then they'll be just I don't know I mean, the standards are getting so much better so. Um, in general when you tell us that there are Wrestlemania uh, tournaments in gaming uh, who are the best gamers in the WWE Kofi Kofi <laughs> Kofi <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think his, his big competition used to be Shelton, but uh, yes. Shelton's no longer with us. So Kofi has a run of the, the game. You know, uh, surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, I don't know what else he would do, but uh, Hornswoggle, he's pretty good, you know. So he, uh, him and Kofi usually end up battling each other uh, at the finals of WrestleMania. It's pretty entertaining, to say the least. <laughs> It's actually um, embarrassingly bad for me because I never play the games, obviously. Yeah. I barely <coughs> work a cell phone properly. And they put me in the tournament this year at WrestleMania in the access side, so and I, I got beaten by the great Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was just embarrassing. So I think I actually did a good enough job that they won't ask me to ever do it again. Which I'm happy with that. <coughs> What about Punk? He beat Kofi on the bonus material on this new DVD. Did he? Yeah, with DVD Zangief, either. Street Fighter. Yeah, oh, really? It, it was his DVD, they're not going to show him losing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to lose those. Yeah, yeah but, but Kofi was really pissed when he, lo when he lost to CM Punk. Yeah, Kofi takes it extremely <laughs> seriously. <laughs> like, the way we train, you know, work out to stay in shape, I th that's how Kofi takes gaming. So.
Maybe um, back to the, to the tour here. Um, how is it for you to um, be able to compete in, in Germany and to show your your people, uh, the people here, what what you're doing? I mean, America is huge. It's uh, lots of more fans. But how is it to, uh, to be here and now in Hamburg and in April, for example, and in Berlin? How is it for you here? As I said, I, I, I've been coming here for years. I, I, it was my second home for a while, Hamburg, in, in the late 80s. Um, and I used to base myself living here when I was working in Europe as well. So, unfortunately, I'm not getting the chance to see anything today. We just got off the plane here and we're leaving straight afterwards. Um, it's always nice to come back here. Um, it's sad for me in a way because I realize time's just gone by that quickly and you wish you could start it all over again. But it's just nice. Um, I have a great tradition of, of wrestling fans in Germany for 50 years, so it, it, it's, it's nice to come back. You know, the, uh, it, we're, all, we're, we're in the States most of the time, you know, and so it, we hit these cities and we hit them quite frequently, and so the fans, you know, they, there, they get us uh, uh, many times during the year. So when we come here, it's it, there's a, a little I'd, I'd say a little it, it's more special in, in a way just because there's that aura of you know it, it's it doesn't come but it's almost like the fair that comes once a year or something you know and uh, so when we come it's such a welcoming from the fans and uh, you just see the loyalty and the excitement on the kids and, and everyone and so for us. That really that helps us perform to a you know I, I feel like a a higher level and uh, because because the fans want it so much you know sometimes I think the that our fans back home they get spoiled so it's it's very it's it's exciting for us to come back all the time and uh, we're always welcome uh, with open arms so yeah. thank you somebody else perhaps gerne. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Real. Yes. You've already mentioned your time in Germany. You wrestled the, the big tournaments for CWA, the big Otto Wands. Uh, maybe you can tell us a very, your favorite story maybe of this time, maybe including a young Fit Finlay or Eddie Steinblock, Franz Schubert, I don't know. Oof. Um, <laughs> I don't think anything I could say on camera. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some good stories. <laughs> doesn't have to be PG. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we can beep that. <laughs> All I can remember, the thing that I can say is that when I used to come, it was a very big deal for me to come here. You know, to, when you, I didn't ever think I was going to go to America start in England, the big thing to do was to come to Germany in the 80s. That was the place to come to the, the, the catch tournament in Hamburg and then to the CWA. And just getting here and seeing all these you know, legendary kind of people, it was a huge deal. I was 20 when I first came here. And just all, just in total all. Um, But I think that the, the, the memory that I have is just the, the special, it, it, it was the greatest, this is going to offend the WWE, but working here was the best job I ever had. Because there's no traveling. That's the hard, the only hard thing about working for any, in wrestling is, is the traveling, flying everywhere. When you were here, you were in the same place, and, and like six weeks at a time. And I used to get up to a lot of Melbourne. And I can't really tell you about it. <laughs> but I liked it. And, uh, Thank you anyway. He uh, mentioned uh, the flying, the buses, the tours. Yeah. Uh, take us through your last seven days. Because you're in really good shape. And I think it's kind of hard to maintain the shape. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I actually just, just came from the gym about 10 minutes before I walked in this room. 
Uh, we, for instance, we woke up this morning, we got on a bus, went to the airport, jumped on a plane. There was a bus to pick us up. As soon as I got here, I jumped in a car and went to the gym. I left the gym, came straight back here, and literally basically walked into this room. You know, and that's just a, a day. And tonight, we will wrestle the show, then we'll get on a bus and we'll drive four and a half hours to Leipzig. 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 I don't even know. I just know I got to make the bus on time. <laughs> but, you know, we're here for the next 10, 12 days in uh, Europe, and, and that's basically our day every day. You know, uh, back home, it's we're on four days off, three days, you know, and it's really two and a half because one of those days, is a, half of it is, is traveling back home. So uh, having the, you know, the discipline and making the sacrifices to stay in shape uh, physically and eat healthy while you're on the road and find a gym while you're on the road and, you know, being able to withstand being away from your family and your friends and your now my children, your child, you know, it, it's a lot to sacrifice and it's a, it, it, takes, it takes its toll on you. Uh, Mr. Regal can, um, you know, he can testify to that more than even I can. This is six years for me in the business, and uh, I know my dad. <coughs> 29 for me. <laughs> there you go. And, and, you know, I'd be lying if I, if I said that I, uh, you know, I haven't thought of is there anything else I can do because it hurts. You know, what, what we do is entertainment. It's dangerous. We're trained professionals, so we always say don't try this at home. But, you know, it, it hurts. It takes its toll on our body. The first time, when I was telling you I broke my ankle, that was the first time in uh, five years that I had been home more than five days in a row. Uh, and I've, I've torn ligaments in my knee. I had broken ribs and, you know, uh, bulging disc. And, you know, we work through those, those pains. And that's, that's something to, that you just do. And uh, I, I watched this guy last year, wasn't it? Uh, tore your knee up, terrible. His knee was like this big, and the next night he, he wrestled one of the greatest matches I've seen. I think it was in 02 against Brian Danielson. And uh, just wrapped it up, old school, you know? And uh, it's just, that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of how, how our mentality is and the sacrifices that we make. But yeah, the travel is, it's brutal. So if you want to do this, be ready to spend a lot of time looking at the world through a window. Um, really, perhaps you can uh, tell us how many thousand opponents you have faced over those 29 years. Because I've seen you personally here in Hamburg yeah. when I was like uh, this big, and uh, the lots, lots of old-time fans here. I talked to the fans before and um, tell them about the 10, 20,000 guys you have faced. I honestly couldn't. I don't know, but if you, to, to try and figure out how many, if you, had, if you just took a, a basic average and say, I worked it out recently that in 29 years, including, I had a year off once, and I got, when I went to India, I got really sick, and I was off for a year. And including injury time and suspensions, I've been suspended a few times for being naughty. <laughs> um, I've had less than two and a half years of total time in 29. And so if you say an average of 160 matches a year, I mean that's a low side. That's a lot of people. But I'm, I'm very happy. I wouldn't want to change anything. I wouldn't. People say I want to start. Wish I was doing this now, wish I was younger. I'm glad I'm the age I am, I'm glad I'm doing this now because I'm probably the only person left from who's wrestled Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat and Otto Vance and John Haystacks and Rene Lazatez and Franz Van Boyden and all of the big European stars and all the American big stars and still the big stars today. And I've loved every second. Vielleicht wissen Sie es nicht, aber wir haben einen Filmstar und einen Buchautor. Perhaps you guys can tell something about your movie and your book. Sure. Because wrestling is not your only talent. Yeah. Um, for me, I, uh, I mean, it was kind of crazy when I filmed Marine 2. It was 
I think I'd been, I had debuted, and then there were six months, and then I got cast for uh, the Marine Two. And uh, when I when I went and read the audition, I they asked me, and they were like, "How long have you been acting?" And I remember being in there. I was like, well, "About you know, ten minutes." And uh, so I thought I was trying out for like a small part. I thought you know, Cena was the main role, and he was gonna like beat me up or so I don't know, I'd be a sidekick. And we actually came over here and the day I got back, uh, I got a phone call and said, hey, you got the part? I was like, oh, which one? I was like, you're the lead role. And I kind of freaked out. And, uh, but it was, that was one of the, uh, that was, it was so much fun because I spent six weeks in uh, Phuket, Thailand, which if you get the chance, go check it out. It is beautiful. Uh, and. I don't know. I got to stay at a five-star resort. We blew the whole thing up. I was an action hero, and I beat up all the bad guys and made out with the pretty girls. And uh, I, yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't know, man. One of the most fun experiences of my life so far. My wife wasn't too happy watching the movie. But... Sorry. Um... I wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point out that you have okay. many, many talents. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it just, my, uh, I was asked to write my wrestling story. Um, and there's all the cast of characters involved in it from 1983. All the, the British stars and the European stars and the Japanese stars and the American stars. I've never been in a movie. I've, I've, I've never kissed any pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my life. Really. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it's been uh, my life. Um, I've been in lots of. I've been in more video games than anybody else here. Yeah. And I've got more action figures than anybody else here. And I've never been a big star, so I think I've done okay. Out. And I'm still here, <laughs> barely. <laughs> Uh, for uh, for me, I mean, the unfortunately, the uh, selection is now uh, slimming. There's, you know, we have amazing talent now and, and there's a lot of future WWE superstars that uh, I think will be spoken of the way that guys like Mr. Regal are and The Undertaker and uh, you know I've wrestled I've wrestled my childhood hero Shawn Michaels um, I wish I could have wrestled Bret Hart uh, I had the opportunity to wrestle uh, um, the Undertaker over here, actually, with along with DX. I mean, that was some of the best times of my life so far. But uh, a guy I haven't stepped in the ring with, two guys. One, this guy. Uh, two, I, I think I could have a really good match with Dolph Ziggler, and I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, like a chance at Dolph. You know, uh, so let's see. I mean, I, I've been, I've, I've been against John Cena, Batista, Triple H, Shawn. All those, all the top guys, and now there's a new batch. I wouldn't mind going to war either with one of my buddies, uh, Seamus. You know, we roomed together, so nobody ever saw those fights. And we can play that out one day in the ring. Okay, have you have any last question, please? Or then I have another question for you, sir. Um, a wrestler which name, whose name I won't name now uh, has told me that you have forgotten more moves than he will ever know. Is that really true? Are you a man of <laughs> several thousand holes? I don't really know. People say a lot about me. <laughs> what, what are you supposed to say? You know, you're said yes, I mean, to you're you're a great you're superstar, good. perhaps? Um, I, yes. You, I'm just one. I, 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 luckily, from my era when I started and, and European wrestling was you had to be a very good wrestler else you didn't you were not you just couldn't stay you would be weeded out very quickly. 
Um, and so luckily I had the best teachers in the world that were nice enough to teach me. And I teach anybody that I train now a lot of everything that I know. Whether they ever do it or use it, you don't really have to anymore. But I don't know about forgotten. I just don't need, I don't have to do it so much. I mean, you never forget that stuff. It's like it's been beaten into me too much to be quite honest with you to forget anything. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Did you practice it? Are there any more questions? Okay, um, if